hello guys welcome to the channel it simplified uh, great to see your feedback and uh, hopefully today's video will also uh, be helpful today i'm not going to show you any deployment or any configuration in the portal today i'm just here to talk generally about uh, uh, a specific scenario and uh, how you can architect this i won't go into much into the detail and the options available and uh, by in no means these are the only way uh, you can you can architect but the idea about today's uh, video is that to just to give you an idea how big the cloud is and uh, what are the some of the options it can unlock because when you talk about uh, deploying this uh, environment right from high availability point of view if we have to deploy this on-prem it is it requires a lot of planning you need to have uh, redundant hardware a lot of software licensing so uh, it requires a lot of stuff and uh, certain things we take it for granted when we talk about public cloud so that's the idea about today's uh, videos that uh, and as you can see the scenario is that's the customer need is they want to deploy a web application or a web server with uh, sql in the back end and uh, we'll see uh, what we can do and how we can architect depending upon uh, uh, different options available. Okay, so let's look at and we'll see the first option. So you're having this discussion, right, with a customer. Maybe he wants to start with deploying a server, web app server, web application, IAS server. If you're talking about uh, Microsoft and then uh, it'll be talking to the SQL backend. So what we can do is when we talk about Azure specifically, you can deploy a server. Let's say web server. It'll be talking to a SQL in the backend where all the data will be stored. And for this, we'll be using a managed disk. and it will be premium, so you get better performance. Right, so this is one of the way we can do it, uh, and uh, you'll be able to deploy uh, from different series of uh, VMs which are available. So this can be an option one for a customer. Okay, so let's see in case the customer requires a little bit higher uh, redundancy, what is the option? So let's look at option two. And we are all deploying this in, 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 in the cloud, in Azure specifically, right? I'm just going to talk about Azure because some of the terminology might not be the same for the other one. So manage disk and all that, specifically for Microsoft. So let's look at the second option. So second option is that, uh, you know, customers a requirement is a little bit higher they say that they want a little bit higher redundancy so what you can do is you can deploy this in a availability set so i can have uh, say two servers i can put a load balancer it will be an external load balancer because it's web face Then I can have a second uh, availability set. It'll be in front of an internal load balancer. Right, and uh, the traffic will be diverted. Now what this will do is that, and both of them, they're in the availability set. So in case one machine goes down, you have still the other machine available and uh, same thing uh, for both uh, web application as well as uh, the database server. So this will give you a little bit higher redundancy because uh, it will protect you from hardware level failure in case that uh, power supply or switch on that uh, server goes down, which is it is attached to, the traffic will be routed. And by the way, this is all under one region. So we are talking about, you can pick any region within, within, uh, within Microsoft Azure and you can deploy that. Okay, now that's option number two. Now what happens if you need even further redundancy, right? So there's something what you call, uh, I talked about this availability set, there's something what you call availability zone, 
right? So availability set will protect you from data center level failure because uh, in one region of Azure, there are multiple data centers. So if uh, at the data center level it goes down, if there is that drag goes down, the traffic will be diverted and you can use availability set. But what happens if the whole uh, data center within one region goes down? So what you can do is you can use something what you call availability zone. Right, so they don't share the same power supplies and everything, and uh, you can deploy servers. And uh, very similar to the first one, you can deploy a load balancer, and the traffic will be uh, routed automatically. And in case the whole data center, so this is say data center one, this is data center two, the whole data center goes down, the traffic will be still diverted and your business won't see an impact. So you can also do this way too. Okay, so let's look at the last option. And as I said, this is not the only way you can architect. And when I say last option in this, uh, what I'm explaining, you can also use a lot of pass offering also. So, but just to give you an idea about, right? So the fourth option is that, how about if my services are very big, right? And uh, my web server has been uh, 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 being reached from different uh, hook and corner of the country uh, all across the globe and why I need a redundancy at that level. So what you can do is you can deploy this in multiple region. So what I can do is, so say this, all the three options, they're happening in one region, one region only, right? All these three options are in one region and in one region you have multiple data center. Now we want to see the redundancy at the multi-region level, right? So what I can do is Let's say this is region one. This is region two. I can deploy a load balancer. In this case, I'll put an application gateway. It's give me a little bit better redundancy. I can create a backend pool for my web server. I can have multiple web server in this. Same thing for, for SQL. In this, I will use an internal load balancer. I can create uh, multiple SQL server. Same thing here, I'll use an uh, application gateway. I'll create a backend pool. I'll create an internal load balancer. Very similar to the first one, I have multiple SQL servers. SQL 1, SQL 2, SQL 3, right? And then I'll put a traffic manager in the front. So depending upon from where the request is coming, uh, so uh, I can deploy this in region specifically. I can choose say a uh, North American region. I can put this in Asia Pacific. And if somebody is coming from that region, he will uh, reach this. Uh, this region and the servers in that and the services available and somebody is reaching for North America, he will hit this region. And even the whole region, say for example, it goes down, uh, your, your, uh, your application or your web services will be still running. So these are some of the options, as I said, that you can do uh, and utilize. And the reason I want to bring is sometime, as I said initially, that we take it for granted, you know, what kind of elasticity uh, public cloud gives. And imagine if you have to replicate this on-prem, that will require 
months and months of planning it will require you know you need to have the highest return in hardware the software it's a mix of you know a lot a lot of option it can it can really get complicated so uh, these are some of the options uh, which gets unlocked by using public cloud uh, as I said that this is a general uh, idea I wanted to give from what public cloud can achieve hopefully this gives you an idea about uh, what uh, options are available uh, within within public cloud and Azure in specific from architecting uh, certain needs from the customer and as I said that uh, these options uh, you can you can mix and match and these are not the only one you can have a lot of uh, permutation and combination you can you can do a lot of fun stuff with this according to the need of the customer so I hope you found this video useful on uh, Azure. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.